In a simple black and white message, the best women's hockey players in the world announced on social media that they are taking a unified stand by sitting out. Without any movement or action, there is no change. Minnesotan Amanda Kessel did take action in 2017 as part of the U.S. national team that boycotted USA hockey before the world championships. And it did bring change, including better pay, benefits, and support. But this professional hockey boycott is about sustainability. Yesterday, the Canadian Women's Hockey League folded, and players say the U.S.-based National Women's Hockey League, which includes the champion Minnesota Whitecaps, also lacks resources. Limited games, limited compensation. This year, our team went weeks without an athletic trainer. I, I don't even think you get that at a high school or any level. The sad part of it is what we were giving up wasn't much. It's hard to say really what's going to happen. Nicole M. Lavoie with the U of M's Tucker Center for Research on Girls and Women in Sports says in this case there isn't a clear solution. The big question at hand here is how do you build and sustain a professional women's hockey league? And who's going to provide the backing and the resources? Last month, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman said if there's no opportunity for women to play professional hockey, then we would explore what would make sense. But he said he doesn't want to put the NWHL out of business. And so far, that league still plans to continue in October, though it's unclear who will play. So we're willing to give up that short-term gains for the future of women's hockey. Today, the NWHL said it's agreed to offer players increased salaries and a 50-50 revenue split from sponsorships and media rights deals. But the players say that doesn't do all that much considering some are earning as little as $2,000 a year and left to pay for their own health insurance.